limitations of financial statements. So financial statements, we've made a manufacturing account, trading account, profit and loss account, and balance sheet. These reflect what is the purpose of the financial statements to let us know the results of the operating activities and to tell us what are the assets and liabilities on a particular day at the year. <clears throat> However, the financial statements also have certain drawbacks, have certain limitations and when we read financial statements, we should keep these limitations in mind. <clears throat> What are these? Briefly, let us just cover what are some of these limitations. Historical cost. This is one of the concepts, accounting concepts that we follow, that all assets when we purchase, we record them at the historical cost, <clears throat> the cost at which we bought. But over a period of time, for example, land acquired 50 years ago for 1 lakh of rupees may be worth a crore today. But it would continue to appear in the books at its historical cost, not really giving a correct picture about the value of the assets in the organization. So in the balance sheet, the land would continue to be shown at 1 lakh. <clears throat> That is why sometimes there is revaluation of assets by which we increase the value of these assets and create a reserve called a revaluation reserve. However, the reason that we maintain historical cost is that it is objective. It is not a matter of opinion. It is the actual price for which we acquire the asset. <clears throat> Another drawback of the financial statements is that it considers only transactions which can be valued in terms of money. Sometimes in an organization, the biggest assets are its people. <clears throat> but the strength of the people, the strength of the management, the, the competence of the management, etc., are not reflected in the financial statements. <clears throat> that is why there is a new area called human resource accounting. But usually financial statements are prepared on a historical basis and only those transactions which can be measured in terms of money are considered. <clears throat> Perpetual continuity and periodical account. <clears throat> a business following the going concern concept. A business will continue for a long period of time to come. That is the basic assumption when we prepare financial statements. And because it will go on for a long period of time, this long period of time is divided into and years into periods, equal periods of one year each. And financial statements are prepared so that for each year, each such equal period, we can ascertain the profits and we of course know the financial position as at the end of that period. <clears throat> as a result, when some expenditures are made, some assets are bought, we have to make an estimate about the life of that asset. This may not always be accurate. It is left to the judgment of the management. To that extent, objectivity is lost. <clears throat> Another disadvantage would be the different accounting policies. Valuation of 
fixed assets, valuation of inventories, valuation of investments, etc. can be done in different ways. For example, as we have seen, in depreciation, the straight line method of computing depreciation may be followed or a written down value method or an annuity method <clears throat> or the number of hours of production method, etc. So, different organizations may have different accounting policies. So also with respect to valuation of inventories, where the FIFO method or the weighted average method, etc. may be followed. So it is possible that different policies are followed by different firms. The financial statements as they are, are fine if we are making them for one concern, comparing the results year after year for the same business. But we, when we compare different organizations in the same industry or organizations or companies of different industries, sometimes comparability is lost because of these limitations of financial statements. 